This is the Insomniacs Anonymous podcast, now providing a matchmaking service to help you find your imaginary boyfriend. Today on the podcast, we go over some of the updates that came with Guild Wars 2's recent living story patch. We talk about paladins and how much it feels like a certain other FPS we all know and love. PewDiePie goes to Patreon in jest, it seems. And we read the Old Man Henderson story you voted for last week. Stick around, the banter is about to begin. Welcome to the IA Podcast. It is September 21st. It's a Wednesday, not the normal recording day, because yesterday was the launch of Guild Wars 2 Living Story Season 3, Episode 2. And we wanted to have a little bit of information on that and feedback before we said anything. Uh, I am Schrodinger's cat, that weird fucker in a box, and I am joined today by... Who? Who, who are we? Who are, are we? you? Who, 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 who the fuck are you? I don't know who I am. Who you? Uh, I my name, you. my underwear says dude run, but uh, that's about as fun. Yes. Hey, at least it doesn't say Calvin Klein. Very true. We are missing Brian today. Uh, he was unable to join us. Uh, as mentioned previously, he might be a little scarce for a couple months just because of life and things. So, um, we'll see how that goes. He still might join us for podcasts, but not this one, which gives us all the more time to talk about Guild Wars since he's yes. not much of a Guild Wars guy. Hey. And... I guess that's a good segue right into it. Let's talk about Guild Wars 2, Living Story, Season 3, Episode 2. Good God, this is a long title. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's a new map that came with it, and I would talk about the story. It's true. But, uh, I, I would talk about the story, but spoilers, and Shro has not played it, so definitely no spoilers. Yeah, maybe... Maybe I should actually jump to the part where I'm getting back into Guild Wars 2 and where I am and what that's involved. Yeah, let's do that first. Um, uh, so, as we kind of have talked about in previous episodes, I do finally have my computer back in 100% order, and I can finally play Guild Wars again. And so, sneakily, I have been getting that in here and there. Um, I actually managed to notice that I... At one point when I tried to log in on my old system, I uh, had switched over my account to appear as invisible. And it I didn't think it would, but it actually did persist. So I can log in and nobody notices that I've logged in because it doesn't show up. And so it, the game still says that I haven't logged in in like seven months. So even though I've logged in several times in the last week or two, um, yeah. No You're still MIA. Yeah, pretty much. And so one of the uh, things I'm working on doing is learning all of the changes that has happened. And I was already a little slow on getting Living Story Season 2 stuff done, which was what was the precursor to Heart of Thorns. I was on Chapter 6 or 7, or Episode 6 or 7. You were nearly done. Yeah, I was nearly done, but I mean, when you consider pretty much everybody had been waiting for Heart of Thorns and done with the living story, uh, I mean, episode eight came out, what, back in January, I think, almost? Or, like, it was almost a year ahead of Heart of Thorns, wasn't it? no idea. I feel like it was. So, yeah, I, I, I've been considerably behind on that, um... So yeah, I've been working on getting that back. In fact, I have a bunch of the mastery points and credit earned for Heart of Thorns content, as a, especially as an owner of Heart of Thorns, but I haven't even done the slightest iota of work in Heart of Thorns, so it still has all that content locked out to me, um, which is kind of hysterical. It's like, you, you're going to be able to do all this stuff, but you're not allowed to do it yet because you know you need to actually load the map for once, you fucker. <laughs> it's okay, we'll get you to your elite spec later. Yeah, yeah. So, 
yeah, working on catching up on that. Um, but I have started bugging the Fort Aspenwood uh, World vs. World group again, talking to them. Uh, they have a Discord chat with verification bots and music bots and all sorts of weirdness oh, cool. going on uh, that I'll have to bug them how they did. Um, I, I do have a special appreciation that the um, bots are various forms of I'm Mr. Me Seeks. And I don't know. As a Rick and Morty fan, I kind of love it. So, yeah, I don't know exactly what's going on in Living Story Season 3, but considering I already know some of the major headline spoilers for uh, Heart of Thorns, and that it's pretty much no secret at all, if you even look at a trailer, that Season 3 is pretty much, yep, Primordius is back, or Primordius or whatever. Primordius, the big yeah. fire dragon is back. Woohoo. Oh, yeah. So, uh, dude, you can <laughs> take it from there, I think, because okay. you know more about this than I do. <laughs> um, in this living story, we're going to the Ring of Fire area, particularly a place called Ember Bay. It is fucking awesome. Reminds me a lot of Mount Doom in terms of, like, appearance. So there's, like, big lava mountain, or not lava mountain, volcano with a bunch of skulls on it. Sometimes did lava you, pours out of it. Did you just call a volcano a lava mountain? Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> Fucking hell. Oh my god, that was so left field though, that it took my brain a minute to process and I'm like, did he just? My brain he did. farted, he okay? Did just... That's amazing. Writing that down, big lava mountain. <laughs> wow. <laughs> All okay. Right. Anyways, moving on. The big lava mountain. <laughs> well, it didn't Rome really look fire. like a volcano to me because it had it was a mountain with faces on it, and I thought, oh, it's a mountain, but there's lava involved. Okay. Anyway, the place is really fucking awesome, but the flight skills that you have in Bloodstone Fen, those are not used, and. I kind of understand why, because those made fighting a little stupid easy. If you wanted to fight or kill a bunch of mobs, you just plop an AoE down while you're gliding, and then whoop de doo it's dead. But anyway. Skills gotten in Bloodstone Fen? Isn't that one of the normal... Isn't that where Tequadal is? No. That's, uh... Something else, I think. Sparkfly Fen is where Tequadal was. Bloodstone Fen is Sparkfly the... Fen. Living Story Season 3 Episode 1 map. That is a mouthful. Got it. Holy shit. We need, to, we need to come up with a shorthand for that. Anyway. Really not... Really there hasn't been a whole lot of new content for this update aside from the new map and the bosses and stuff. But in terms of new stuff, we do have a new legendary mace called Eureka, which I've not seen yet. But if you want to get a hold of that yourself, you can talk to Grandmaster Craftsman Hobbs and Lion's Arch to get that going. There's been some world polish in Fields of Ruin and Fireheart Rise. Uh, we have a thing called Targeted Alerts. I have not tried that personally, but I'm thinking it's more along the lines of like sending ur sending a message of urgency to this one particular guy you have targeted rather than applying a new target to somebody. But you can do that with Shift and T, as opposed to Control T, which calls targets. You can... the effect changes based on the state of the target, so whether it's an alive ally or an alive enemy, or a downed ally or a downed enemy, it'll change its appearance, I guess. We have some new Fractals of the Mist instabilities for higher level Fractal tiers, and they've removed three of them, of the currently existing ones. The new ones are... Wait, they removed Fractals? No, they removed Fractal instabilities. As you go higher up in the Fractal oh. levels, uh, right, right, right. you have instabilities that'll apply, you have little conditions that'll apply to you, and you yeah. have to work with them. Rather I've, than against them, I've otherwise they will. Never gotten that high in fractals. <laughs> I haven't either. It's never, but, never been a problem for me. <laughs> yeah, I haven't really gotten that far either, but I know they're there and kind of intimidated by a few of them because one was like, if you use your elite skill, you will die. 
It's kind of, kind of weird and kind of excessive to me, but whatever. But the new instabilities, and I don't know where these are placed in the fractal tiers, but they are toxic trails, where enemies leave behind a trail of toxic sludge as they move around. Flux bombs, where you're, peri where you're periodically afflicted by the anomalies flux bombs. I think it's referring to the anomaly from, what's it called? The Thalmanova reactor. Oh, that I say that sounds like Thalmanova. Thalmanova, yeah. Adrenaline Rush, where enemies become enraged for a time when low on health. I think that means they're... they attack harder or faster, I guess. A mist con mist's Convergence, where the fractals of the mists are blurring together. I have no idea what that means. Read it one more time. Mist's Convergence. The fractals of the mists are blurring together... dot dot dot. So this is probably a very ominous thing along the lines. I would just say that sounds like typical ANET. We fucked with things that aren't telling you exactly what's going to happen. Yeah. And if, I read, if I read that straight up as it implies, that sounds like you know you're going to run around the the uh, with the hammer of the gods, and suddenly the Thamanova anomaly is going to kick it from your hands, that and you're going to be like, "What the fuck is going on?" <laughs> Considering there was a fractal where all of the fractals that we currently play are blurring together, or merging together, this would probably be where that goes. But right. this means I have no Wait, idea. that exists already? Yeah. It's been out for like a month now. You and I need to run it, dude. I mean, again, gone for 11 months. I don't yes. know these things. Yes, yes, you have. I mean, about the only stuff I paid attention to was semi-interesting things that showed up on the Guild Wars 2 subreddit, and um, I, I would be a little more attentive to world versus world changes, mechanic and game-wise. The thing I'm trying to learn right now uh, was, or is, like, the politics that's happened in world versus world. In the last um, 11 months. That's the part that nobody really truly speaks about unless you really follow. Follow World be World, right? Yeah. So. Well, now that you're back, maybe I can finally get back into World be World willingly. <laughs> yeah. Like, my, one of my, my big confusions at the moment is after joining the Fort Aspenwood Discord, I noticed that one of the listed players is has the nickname of one of the guys that is known as one of the biggest world versus world shitheads in the world um the guy that would constantly try to stack tears and get people to rally him and had like a couple hundred followers of idiots and that would just start the blob wars from yaks bend should we name names? Because I'm curious. Um, I mean, no one would probably notice here, but um, I actually don't know if we should name names. Maybe just type it to me, because it won't go off on... That's true, I can do that. Typing in Discord! You da -da 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 -da. can't hear shit! Da -da. You should be able to hear it, though, because I'm on a mechanical keyboard. Yeah, it's, you it's can hear you type, but we keyboard. can't hear what the name is because it's in text form, and text is not shown up in the podcast. So, yeah. I mean, we keep saying that it might one day, but... Maybe, but I don't have text-to-speech on, so there's that. I was more of thinking with the video cards. Video cards? Um... I don't know what you're I, I still don't. I still don't think you've shown uh, Rocket League got to touch the ball. Have I? Oh wow, don't... I haven't. Fuck, I gotta go back and fix that. I don't even remember what episode that was. I don't either. <laughs> I'll show it in this one, and then I'll try to look back on the others. It's probably way too late for SoundCloud, but I'll find it for YouTube. But while you're getting that typed out, Tro. I will go on. Oh, you already finished typing it. Whatever. I was going to say, 
get it typed out, it was two words, and I sent them I, already. I wasn't looking at the PMs folder. I was looking in the server, but okay. Um, in terms of new things, we do have some new, a new backpack, ha, black black backpack and glider combo in the gem store called the Mersat backpack and glider combo. I think it's just a Mersat glider. We have some. We have a Mersat robes outfit in the gem store as well. And finally, we have new guild hall upgrades that have have been added that allows guilds to unlock a leather and cloth synthesizer node in the guild hall. This might be what I've heard about in another guild just yesterday. What the hell does that mean? I have no idea. <laughs> Apparently I... leather and cloth are now in like a plant form. You use a plant gathering tool to gather leather and cloth and I don't know why. Oh. Interesting. Well, I guess those were pretty high-priced items for crafting. Yeah, a little bit. So I guess they're they're trying to make the economy a little cheaper. Yeah, I'm gonna say they're fucking with the economy a little bit there. I don't for think you want to do that, ain't it? Can't let you do that, ain't it? No, I, honestly, that's probably a good thing for a lot of crafting and yeah. people getting into the game. I think the to. biggest change in that regard, though, is when they uh, halved a bunch of the shit. And I think, didn't they even turn off one of the uh, time gates for uh, scribing so that scribing was like a, you know, possible thing? Maybe. I don't know. I haven't messed with scribe. I know ever. that I know they changed scribe balancing so that it's more ch more doable and realistic now. Yeah. So that you don't have to have like an entire guild support just to send you shit. Yeah, that that was really nice of them and I glad they did that, because fuck. It's looking at the amount of gold you had to spend to master it, it's just that's uh, I forget what the amount was. I think it was something like 20,000 gold originally. I don't even know. I remember it would take like months and months to master it. With the time gating, I'm assuming. Yeah, I have no idea. All I know is that hopefully it wasn't 20. I thought it was like more like 2,000. Yeah, but that's still a fuck ton of gold when you consider that most legendaries sell for, like, 3k. Anyway, I'm gonna be trying my hardest to push Shro through his current living story in the Heart of Thorns expansion, so he can play... No, no pushing. Shro oh. doesn't do pushing. Okay, I will accompany you. There you go. Very... <laughs> I'll accompany you, nudging you a little bit here and there. <laughs> Kicking the cat in the tail. <laughs> <laughs> Kick Maybe the baby. dragging him. Kick the baby. <laughs> and hopefully he'll get through Living Story Season 3, Episode 2. We still need a shorthand for that, but we'll, I'll try to get him through that eventually in the coming weeks. And then he'll have personal experience, and we can probably talk about the story at that point. You already talked about getting back into Guild Wars 2, right? Yeah. Okay, so we can scratch. What about that. this Paladins game? Uh it's a free to play game on Steam now. Or there's more to the name too, oh, isn't yeah. there is something I forget what something it is, of the dude. Paladins. Oh I don't know. A... Let's just come out and say what we're trying to say here. This is a fucking clone of Overwatch. Yeah. I mean it's a free alternative to Overwatch, so there's this something is true. Going for it. Uh, my one gripe, though, is that not every hero is playable at the start. And that there was, like, what, five, six heroes that you could play at right out of the gate? I don't know. I played the guy named Pip, and he's apparently a grenade, heal grenade launcher or healer kind of guy. I like him. He's really fun. It is a bit different from Overwatch, even though a lot of the characters feel the same way. Like, there's this one witch character who is literally a 
carbon copy of May from Overwatch. The whole, like, oh, hey, I'm going to freeze my enemies, and then I'm going to hide in the popsicle while I heal my... <laughs> hide in the popsicle. Yeah. I become the human popsicle known as May. And isn't there somebody that's basically the... What is it, Reinhardt that has yeah. the, the porter the shield. shield? Yeah. I forget Though his I name. I have to admit, it kind of looks uh, a little cooler, I think, in Paladins, because yeah. his shield like breaks into four to make the make the yeah. energy shield. Yeah, that is a lot cooler. But how would it like hold itself, though? I don't know. Mm, I don't know either. I need to play more of that. It was kind of fun the times I did play it, but I didn't play it with friends, so. We need to get on on that sometime. I mean, since it's free, I might be able to join you there. Yay! Yay! Yay, yay. Though I think there was a problem with uh, players not knowing how to stand on points. I played one bots match. I mean, isn't that literally every multiplayer game where there yeah. is a capture objective? Yeah. I stand where? You stand on point, and you stay stood on point. Like, I played one bots match, which was, like, best, not best out of five, but, like, you had to be the first to five points in the whole game. Basically, you had to win your, you had to win the game five times, and if you didn't win five times, then it would go up to a maximum of ten rounds. But this one map I played was a capture point and then a payload. And you captured the center of the map first, and then whoever captured first had to push their cart over to the enemy side. While the loser of that capture point has to defend. So a little bit different from FPSs I've played anyway, but yeah. kind of fun. I don't know much about the heroes, though, so I won't talk about them. I only know Pip. And Pip really isn't everybody. Ever. So you keep saying Pip, and all I can think of is, is when you did the Let's Play of Adventures of Pip. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, it's not that Pip, unfortunately. It's a big fur... It's not a big furry dude. It's a furry dude. So you might like him, Shro. What? He's a furry. Suddenly, I'm paying attention more. <laughs> Pip is a furry. A mad science furry. Oh my god! Two of your favorite things right there. He's so fucking adorable! <laughs> oh, you found a picture? Pip the fire thief. Oh. I love it! Well, I think Shro's gonna be playing paladins for a bit. <laughs> What have you been doing on Factorio? Now we've been playing that a lot. Oh god, Factorio. I think I'm... I, I haven't been able to play it until... middle of last week, I think. Because uh, I, I had to get the computer built and then had to get it installed, all that kind of stuff. Um, and... I have already managed to put like 40 hours into it. Jesus Christ, dude. Um, so do you remember Tech It or Feed the Beast in Minecraft? Yes. All I remember is the amount of time I spent trying to make alchemical coal or the highest tier of that. Right. For money. Um, so it's a little like that. In that all of the industrial aspect of it that, like, me and a few other people really got into, which I actually really miss. We really need to get into, like, some Minecraft again with that. Um, where, you know, you, you mine, you set up machines to mine the oil and the coal and your copper and etc and then you refine them and then you have machines that assemble them into like wires and circuits and so on and so forth hmm. well factorio kind of does away with the like 
weird voxel exploration aspect of that and having to um like micromanage minutia of the actual crafting and the idea is you crash land on this world as you know a spacefaring race that your ship is completely totaled, but you have, you know, some weapons, uh, an axe, and this, you know, smart wrist, wrist computer thing with a bunch of blueprint designs on it for colonization. Um, and so you're able to pretty much immediately start my grabbing a few raw resources, assemble them into a mining machine, and from there, you just get more and more advanced technologies to just right off the bat work on um, being able to build huge mining facilities and then assemblers for various tools and higher technologies with the eventual end goal of supposedly getting a ship to get back into space so you can go home. Huh, that's cool. So that that's the the general idea is that the idea of getting back home is not something you can achieve by just single person efforts and a pickaxe, but that you would need an entire factory of control for developing, you know, advanced computer systems and, uh, you know, rocketry. And I don't know if it has FTL travel assumed or something. I don't know. I haven't gotten that far. Oh, only one way to but, find out. Right. Um, but then the other cool thing is it does give you a um, general antagonist. Oh. oh. Um, the natives on the planet are these, like, bug aliens. It's very uh, Starship Trooper style. Oh. And uh, they are sensitive to your presence and the pollution that your factories cause as a disturbing their habitat thing and they're tough little buggers no pun intended so um if you're not careful they will kick your ass and they do target your defenses and your uh, production stuff so if you don't spend a decent amount of time building up defenses for, against them, then you can get your shit wrecked pretty quickly. Um, also, Factorio is very unforgiving in death. If you die, um, your entire inventory is gone. The weapons you had, anything you were carrying on you, God forbid you were in a vehicle when you died, and the vehicle exploded too, because everything in the vehicle's inventory is also gone. So, we're talking, like, 50 spaces of stacks of items. Non-recoverable. So, but the nice thing is, this factory, hopefully you can produce a lot of those items pretty quickly again. But, yeah. Also, trains are terrifying. Yeah. yeah I remember you telling me that. They, the, one of the cooler things in this game is that um, the vehicles especially trains do move fairly quickly and are good ways to travel and um, from place to place. But if you're not paying attention and you just run across the tracks, the train doesn't stop for you. The game is not forgiving. It will just plow your ass over and you're dead. And a certain crutch from IA really likes to run across the tracks or rather down the tracks because he knows it's a clear path from point A to point B without paying attention to where the train is. And by the time you see the train on your mini map, it's moving so fast that it's, it pretty much is going to hit you. So two or three times now, I think he's become part of the uh, cow catcher on the front of the diesel locomotive. <laughs> Always remember kids look both ways before crossing the railroad and the street. And the, well, I was about to say, like, in the aisle in the grocery store, but that's less dangerous. Unless someone's barrel-assing down the, down the store with, like, 
a cartload of shit. Their momentum will not stop. Yeah. Can you it's like, gonna wreck your shit. How wide is this train's hitbox to where it kills you? As if it's just like one Not game. too big. It's it's like probably two game tiles. Oh, okay. So it, it's not huge. And it's actually kind of terrifying because you can ride the train, which is awesome. Oh, awesome. Um, but you have to get really close to it before the game will recognize that you're within range of a vehicle and allow you to use the enter vehicle uh, button. And so if you're just going up to a train that's stopped at a station and is about to leave at some point and you don't really know entirely when, it can be slightly terrifying because it's like, oh, God, I'm really close to it. Please don't run me over. <laughs> but you're at a station, though. Shouldn't it stop and then, like, Well, most of the you? times in Factorio, a station is a stop for the train and it's controlled by some sort of condition like wait for a full inventory or wait for X amount of seconds or something like that. Mm. So it, 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 again, factory idea, everything's automated. It doesn't exactly uh, okay. just sit there for you. You can click it from a distance and tell it to pause. It's, it's, um, programmed schedule, which I guess would be the smart idea. But it should probably do that then. If you're waiting eh, for it's not really that necessary, honestly. Oh, well, it might stop you from getting run over. Yeah, so it's just Factorio going crazy. Um, there's also something that Crutch really wants us to play, which I guess is the idea of what if Tekkit and the other uh, industrial craft Minecraft mods were standalone and in a slightly better graphical environment, i.e., we didn't code this for fucking Minecraft, which is coded in Java, because who the fuck thought that was a good idea? Um, is this game called Fortress Craft? Oh. And it's it's kind of the idea of again those Minecraft mods with Factorio and a better game engine. And the similar idea of, you know, you have to build a fortress and defend the base kind of aspect to the game. And it, it is 3D. It is a voxel environment. You do go down in caves and mine stuff and set up automated machinery to harvest resources that carry it up to the top side to your base where you build reactors and shields and... You know, all sorts that's of crazy cool. components. and mo So uh, that's something that he really is trying to get all of IA to do at some point, which I think would be a lot of fun if we could get more people to get it. I think it's like 10 or $13 right now. Something I like that. I can afford it in two months. Yeah. I would say. So that's, it's, it's not horrifically expensive, but it, there is a barrier to entry. That's so, cool. I'll have to check that out when I can. Or if someone wants to gift it to me, hint, hint, viewers. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. Say the wall, say the wall. So what is Underfell? Oh boy. <laughs> well, I suppose you should probably preface this by saying I played a game called Underfell for my YouTube channel. You can check that out there if you want. But Underfell is an alternate universe of Undertale mainly made by fanfiction writers, and it's about <clears throat> what if everyone except Flowey was insane? That's the basic premise of it. In regular Undertale, Flowey was a bit insane at the start, and then everyone else was kind of normal. For Underfell, it's the inverse. Everyone else is a bit insane, so like, Toriel's more possessive, and everyone's all dark and a little bit more murderous. Napsabluk is very angry and also, I guess, not. I wasn't crying when I fought him in my playthrough, but the idea is he's just very murderous and angry rather than sad. And Flowey the is actually there kid. to help you. Sorry, what'd you say? I said Napsabluk's the angry emo kid. Yeah, oh yeah. 
Currently, the game I played is a demo and is still being worked on, so... I don't know how the rest of the game itself is going to be, but I fucking love it, oh my god. You actually have to solve Toriel's little puzzles at the start, though. And there are deadly consequences for failing. Nice. Eh. Not so nice Not for nice. the kid going through the underground, but nice gameplay. I was expecting to actually have to go through the puzzles when I played Undertale. And come to find out that little spike walkway thing was just like a guided thing that you can't die from. You literally can't die from those spikes in Undertale. You can walk into them. They are a wall. Why? It's true. Why would you wall off the deadly trap? God damn it, Tario. Because you're a motherly figure goat mom. Okay, true. But in and Underfell, she's, she's not. Adorable. In Underfell, she needs to And I shower. would have her babies. Okay, you need to play Underfell then. <laughs> She terrifies the shit out of me in Underfell. Hey, be careful. I might think it's sexy. I don't know, dude. She's, uh... She, you know what? I'll, I'll just let you handle that, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, fan fictions are more developed than the game right now, so if you're into that sort of thing, go check out... Go look for Underfell fan fictions... They're probably everywhere. I like a lot of them. Not all of them are smut, thankfully. Though there are a few that are. But you will leave my waifu alone. I will leave your Undertale waifu alone, but I will not leave your Underfell waifu alone because your Underfell waifu is trash and scary. Very scary. Holy yeah, shit. I can't help you there. Yeah. It is... I gotta say, it's really refreshing to see an, uh, a friendly Flowey as opposed to a murderous one that wants you dead. I, I admit that is probably my biggest hook for the, <laughs> the oh, game. Yeah. Some, that would be interesting. Kind of sad, though, that his first reaction in the game that I played was, Don't kill me, please. Oh, God. That, that, was, uh, that was a feels trip and a half. But anyway, yeah. Uh, there's couple other fan fiction universes as well that are being made into games that I know of. I think one of them is called Swap Tale or Underswap, where different characters have the personalities of someone they're related to. So like Sans would have Papyrus's personality and vice versa, and Toriel would have Asgore's personality and vice versa, or their positions would just be swapped. So you'd be meeting Asgore in the ruins rather than Toriel, and you'd be meeting Toriel at the end game as opposed to Asgore. And Undyne would be the royal scientist and all that. Kind of cool. It'd be kind of cool to see Napstablook in a in a robot outfit, though. That's been done. Anyway, I'm rambling. Speak, actually, segue a little bit. Hmm? What about Overtale? Have Overta heard anything about oh, that? Oh, yeah. That's still being worked on, from what I can tell. I still really want to play it. But they haven't released a demo yet. By the way, for those that don't know, Overtale is an unofficial sequel to Undertale's true pacifist playthrough. It's being... It's a 3D... RPG being made in the style of uh, Earthbound, as Undertale is kind of the kind of inspired by Earthbound and stuff. It features more than one character and a certain character at the very end of Under. It's fuck it, whatever. It's been a year. Azrael Dreamer is the main character as opposed to Frisk. He, in this universe, he regained a soul, thanks to Frisk, and now he's wandering around the surface. And you kind of just go on adventures and do shit. I don't know exactly what happens, because it's not out yet. 
But it follows Azrael Dreamer and a human named Lucas. And they gotta do something, I don't know what yet. But anyway. I'll give more info when I have it, but I believe you have some... have a story to read, or tell us, Mr. Shro. Yes. So, can you tell us what happened with the voting poll first, though? Okay. If you recall last week, I had left a straw poll on the uh, last episode of the podcast, where I asked, which old man Henderson's story should we read for this podcast? The results have a three-way tie, unfortunately. <laughs> So I guess you get to read whichever one you want. We have Dropping a Yacht onto a Penthouse Suite, owned by a Cthulhu cultist, and I misspelled sweet motherfucker. The stealing of said yacht from cultists of Hastur, thereby starting a cultist gang war, which I think is kind of attached to the first one. But anyway, and the third result is Hell on Ice. All of them have one vote. So I guess yeah. read whichever one you want. I made a boo-boo and the uh, dropping the yacht story and acquiring said yacht um, are kind of the same story in the way the transcript is written, um, but they were initially introduced as separate stories, hence the confusion. So, for dropping the yacht, Old Man Henderson with his erstwhile companion Jimmy, the jock player, and his friends William Broclaw, a once humble bartender, the now dead detectives player. Old Man Henderson burned down his bar on accident and blamed it on the cultists. One bluff check later, and he is now in the posse. There's also Simon Breckenridge, the British spy, also known as the professor's player, now six characters in already. And yes, they were more or less killed by all killed by Old Man Henderson. And then, uh, oh no, that was it. So Old Man Henderson had discovered that there were not one cult to the Elder Gods, but several. This complicated his search for his gnomes and his crusade. He decided to enlist help in making the problem solve itself. Using his contact, Simon discovered that an influential cultist of Hastur was coming to town to try and figure out how an avatar of his god was killed. More on this in the tanker truck incident. He also located the exact dock on which he would be landing his boat. Jimmy, meanwhile, discovered the home of the head of the local Cthulhu cults was at a penthouse suite downtown. A plan was hatched. Old Man Henderson used all of his cunning to steal a military cargo helicopter. Read, he shurikened the pilot as he started the helicopter and then took off in the helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> and then proceeded to hide the helicopter in a warehouse. Jimmy and Will set up a very expensive, exclamation point, very expensive surround sound system speaker, or surround sound speaker system at the docks, while Simon made and planted a lot of smoke bombs. That night, the yacht pulled in, and he, they made their move. Right as Simon maneuvered the helicopter over the docks, he set off the smoke bombs and activated the speakers. On one side, a 50-piece marching band playing God Save the Queen at max volume, and on the other, the audio from the beach scene from Saving Private Ryan. Imagine for a moment what, on, what being on that dock would have sounded like. Utter fucking chaos. <laughs> we jumped down from the helicopter onto the boat and rigged it to lift out of there, during the course of which I ran into the cultist guy and ninja kicked him in the head, knocking him tail over to tea kettle and off the boat. I later learned that he broke his neck in the fall. Damned convenient, otherwise he might not have been or he might have been able to ID me. We then lifted the boat out of there, switched to our secondary audio on all sides. My heart will go on by Celine Dion. <laughs> I was in a vengeful mood, those gnome stealing bastards. <laughs> so when the cultists finally got the smoke to clear, their yacht was gone, their leader was dead, and Celine Dion was stuck in their heads. Not the best of days. Then he went across town in a stolen military cargo chopper, carrying a 40-foot yacht from beneath it, and 
parked the helicopter above the penthouse, with the yacht about 80 feet above it. Then we just cut the line and jumped out with our parachutes and watched the yacht ruin a dinner party while placing bets on whether the military would save the chopper, blow it up, or if it would just hover there until it ran out of fuel. <laughs> <laughs> and that is the dropping of the yacht incident. This is how old man Henderson breaks games. This is making me want to play a tabletop RPG, and I've never done tabletop that. Tabletop RPGs are fucking legit, man. And I can, I've, I get that feeling, but I have no one to play with, even though, like, internet is a thing. Just, like, I haven't had time or anyone to play with, so, yeah, I want to now. I mean, I have a few systems. I could try to run a Roll20 game at some point. That'd be fucking but you'd awesome. need, like, at least, like, three other people. Yeah. So maybe we could do that for a podcast. <laughs> so if fun. anybody listening is uh, really interested in doing a tabletop game, you come by our house. Hit us, and then... hit us up. Yeah. I'll leave a link in the Discord chat. To the Discord chat. If that's okay. Like, is this public yet? I mean, we should be leaving that link to begin with, but. <laughs> oh, okay. I'll do that then. I'll do that then. Other stories we've not read so far for the Old Man Henderson story are Hell on Ice, the tanker truck incident, the director's cuts, which we'll, like, read in order if they're How's that? We kind of have to go in order on that yeah. one, as I recall. And then Eli Burning. So, I'll leave another straw poll, vote on which one you want to hear next, and we'll read it next time. I'm going to sway the votes a little bit. We've already referred to the tanker truck incident, so it should probably be next. Okay, so that's one vote for the tanker truck incident, but Pretty much. still, like, whatever vote wins out. True. <sighs> um, moving on from that, though, if all of the gaming and 40 hours of Factorio didn't clue anybody in... Shro's done with graduate school stuff. Yay! 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 You can game for a little bit. Pretty much. I do need to look get a the job search on full swing though. Oh, so yeah. that is the other thing. But at least that doesn't have a schedule. So and doesn't really do much on the weekends because nobody reads HR e emails on the weekend. I wonder why. At the end of the day, it's just an email. Nobody wants to read work email when they're at home. Mm. I do, but then again, my only job right now is at home. And it never stops. It never stops. It just keeps going and going and going, and it never goddamn stops! Hmm. Uh, I don't. I know ma not many people here like or watch PewDiePie. Maybe just don't watch PewDiePie. But he's taken to Patreon for monetary support, which is surprising. Which honestly, yeah, I would say that surprises me in a lot of ways. Yeah. A for starters, the idea that he would have to, which I think is the point of your entire post and discussion of the topic. And then the second part of, like, how has he not done that already? Like, I almost feel like that would be, like, because a lot of big people in YouTube, gaming, art, creativity, period, have gone to Patreon a long time ago because it's a really awesome platform. Yeah. I mean, but then, you know, he hasn't. I mean, don't even Game Grumps have a uh, Patreon? And no, have they had one I don't think they have a Patreon. They have, uh, they just sell merchandise and stuff. Mm, but okay. uh, YouTuber Boogie2988 does. He has a Patreon. I think that. You and Squaws have mentioned him, and I have no idea who he is. And what I, little uh, I've seen of him, I'm just like, eh. Do you not remember my style. the. Diablo 3 rant some fat guy made about Air 37. That's him. No, actually, I don't, but I'll wow. take your word for it. Really? 
Okay, I've got to show you that. But uh, kind of terrified already. But it it's a character Boogie plays called Francis, and he rants about a bunch of different things, not just Diablo three or whatever. He's done a video on Pokemon Go. I think he's done one about the new World of Warcraft. But yeah, it's a character he plays, but. Buggy's awesome. Buggy's cool. Gotcha. Anyway, as far I think PewDiePie might be kidding on this one because he's done. Wait, he's how do you his, kid about opening a Patreon account? The reason he did it seems a bit sarcastic. At least in his video, he seemed a bit like sarcastic in his uh, talking. I guess I'm not trying to put him down or anything maybe he is legitimately in need at the moment he said he was his credit cards yeah, were stolen and shit don't say anything. Money. oh jesus yeah i'm not gonna hate on pewdiepie i don't hate on him he's a cool guy but especially since the internet will crucify you Eh, I'd be crucified no matter what my opinion of him would be. There are probably people right now with prepping their pitchforks for saying that, me saying that PewDiePie is a pretty cool guy. <laughs> yeah, and he is a pretty cool guy too. from what I've heard of other from other YouTubers. Seems really nice. But he has gone to Patreon to for help with whatever his credit card issues are. He seems like he was joking throughout the whole video. I don't know if that was just his uh, character showing or not, but the rewards are very weird. <laughs> and I'll pull them up really quick, but this proves, though, that YouTube ad revenue sucks ass and should probably not be your only main source of income. Where is... there we go. That's the thing. That's not that's not the one. That's not the one I was looking for. Fuck, where is it? Oh here we go. Found the right one. Wait, no I didn't. It's blocked. Why is it blocked? The Okay, I guess at this point it was uh... Wait, no, that's just the user. Okay, uh I need to find him, I guess. It's not where I thought it would be. It's gonna There's take a lot time. of dummy accounts. Yeah. Unfortunately, for anyone famous, like, even if, like, a like hundred thousand subscribers, you'd probably have, like, a few hundred bajillion dummy accounts. Everyone wants to be PewDiePie. Everyone wants to be Markiplier, Jacksepticeye. No one wants to be Dude Run. Nobody wants to be Dude Run. Oh, God. But, um... To suddenly shift gears real hard for just a second, as I mentioned, the uh, um, surprising figure in the uh, Fort Aspenwood Discord, I mm -hmm. actually posted that as a question on their shout box, and somebody got back to it like, no, 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 it's not that Mal. God damn it, he's going to be so mad when I tell him that somebody thought he was that Mal. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then other things happen between two of the bigger trolls in Fort Aspenwood that are so offensive in wording that I'm not going to read it on the podcast. Oh boy. Um, they are the very aggressive vehement style trolls and their vernacular is a little questionable. Oh, wow. <laughs> right. And somebody turned this into a message of the day. It is a, uh, appears to be a scene from Brokeback Mountain oh, with boy. a news footage over it <laughs> saying, Breaking news, Guild Wars 2, no raid, dead game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. These guys, let me tell you. Now, well, ratings kind of tired after a while. You literally have to follow a meta. 
as opposed to how the game originally started, where you didn't have to follow a meta, but doing so is recommended. You have to have a healer or a tank and 9 DPS that are maxed out in what they do. But back onto the PewDiePie Patreon thing, I guess he stopped doing it at this moment, because I can't find his Patreon He stopped Patreon the Patreon page. already? Yeah, I can't find his Can Patreon you page. on YouTube for the video? Yeah, I did, and it's, it's oh. not up. So you might hear like a bit of video, YouTube audio in the podcast, and I apologize, but it was like for a split second I advertisement. I didn't hear it. Don't sue me. I don't know why you would, but whatever. <laughs> but like when it was up, I remember seeing like it had made three thousand dollars in a, in like a couple days. Three thousand dollars per a video month. or a, a month. month? Month. So if he to was fair, seriously, that's actually not a huge amount of money on Patreon. I mean, it's a it's certainly a chunk of change. Well, I would it's like certainly to money to live on. on. Yeah, it is. I mean, that's probably about how much I'll make when I get out of graduate school, assuming I get into graduate school. That's pretty good. I wish I could get money like that. <laughs> so, yeah, with like eight plus years of higher education, I'll be able to make the same as fucking PewDiePie making videos about goddamn Happy Wheels. I think he stopped that, actually. Yeah, I think so, too, but that's really all I know PewDiePie for. Mm. Yeah, personally, I like Jacksepticeye's Happy Wheels playthroughs better. Yeah, I, I think I, I honestly better. like him as a YouTuber more than some of the other names. Yeah. Come at me. Come at me, Internet. One thing to Do remember, it. we're not hating on other YouTubers, we're just saying, like, our preferences. Not every YouTuber's for everybody. Like, I know I'm not for everybody. Brian's How dare Americans everybody. have opinion. Yeah. Fucking hell. Oh, yeah. Part of the, part two of that was how bad YouTube ad revenue was. Uh, it sucks ass. You're... For every 1,000 views for advertisements which have to be viewed for a total of 30 seconds each. Uh, you get about a dollar, maybe a little less. And if you're just starting out on YouTube, that sucks ass. Yeah, it does. Yeah. That's why I'm trying to push Patreon a lot, because uh, I make no money. <laughs> I'm so small a channel right now that I don't even get paid a month. My network has a threshold for payment where you have to accumulate $100 before you can get paid. And that's the same for most uh, YouTube networks and even those without a network. If you're partnered directly through Google as opposed to a multi-channel network where you get uh, perks and stuff for just being with them. So remember, kids, if you do YouTube, remember to do merchandise at some point. So that's probably going to be your main source of income. I think that's about it, unless we want to talk about Brian being away from the podcast again. Nah. Okay. I mean, other than that, I have furry porn, so... Yay! Furry porn is good. <laughs> and any from Pip from Paladins? <laughs> no, I haven't gotten that far yet. Damn. <laughs> I'm sure I could uh I could answer that question real fast though. Yeah, look it up. I have to know, and I prefer to know on air, so we just, just in case anyone else is curious. Mm. No, goddamn it, internet! Don't stop it. What's your internet doing? It it's just derping all over the page. Oh, oh wait, off topic, but on the uh. Google Doc we have here. What is September 21st? <laughs> oh, Jesus. On the, <laughs> what did I do? On the, First, on the, the Google yeah. Doc, it's September 21st with a TH at the end. It's what happens yes, when you make Shro do stuff early in the morning when he's tired. 
I have one image of Pip with a large penis. Awesome. There is part of it. The world now knows. So there's probably more somewhere. Oh, yeah. That's what I found on the website I decided to use. Well, if there's porn on that site, then there's probably porn elsewhere. Yep. I think that about exhausts every topic we had. We covered about an hour. Nice. There we go. We did it good. Even without Brian. Well, that just makes it sound like you don't even want him to be here. <laughs> That's mean, dude, Ron. I'm not a nice person. Are you kidding? Are you kidding right now? Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, I think you are. Yeah. Fucking love Brian. Oh, Brian's oh my awesome. god, I want a bagel. I want uh, We already sushi. slapped a bagel on it, though. Yeah, I want sushi. Can we slap sushi on it instead? Oh my god, yes. Okay. I want sushi. Me too. I also want a nap. Jesus Christ, I can't get up. St staying up to play Factorio till 4 in the morning has really <laughs> fucked my sleep over. <laughs> and I did that like three days ago. Jesus. Yeah, that's not good, dude. But the factory... The factory can fucking wait a day. It's all automated anyway, unless, like, bug people attack it. Can that even happen bug in Factorio? Bug people. But what? Can bug people attack your factory in Factorio? I mean, they're bugs. But can they assault your factory because you're polluting the world or whatever? Yeah, that that was the whole oh, okay. antagonizing system that I explained earlier. <laughs> well, I didn't remember. I just thought, like, oh, hey, you go did, out you to wander the out? world, and then there's these bug people that want you dead. No, no, they they actively attack you. Ah, uh, okay. Ugh. All right. Well, I think that sounds like we made a day. Yeah, we made an hour, but still. Well, that too. You've been listening to... What even episode was this? I'd actually never seen. 19. 19. Okay. This is the Insomniacs Anonymous podcast, episode number 19, or at least it has been. And this is Shro and Dude Run signing off. Good night, everybody. It's one in the afternoon. Fuck you. It's probably going to be night when I upload this. Okay. Fair enough. Let's be honest, nobody's going to listen to it in the middle of the day. Eh, they might. Maybe tomorrow. Nobody will listen to it in the middle of the day because it's Insomniacs Anonymous. You do when I post it in the middle of the day. Yeah, I do. <laughs> 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 Almost every time. We're totally not narcissists. Yeah. We love the sound of our own voices. Pretty much. Every time. Oh, yeah. I... I've actually done radio and theater long enough that I, I still hate my voice, but I'm just kind of like used to it now. I'm just like, yeah, that's me. Fuck. Yeah, I was the same way when I started YouTube, and I still am, but I'm over it. Yeah, you get over it eventually. Dude, yeah. run! Pull the plug! Do it! Do I, it I now! I can't Do find the now. plug, dude. I, you I, are dude. I can't find... You're also a dude, though. Why did you make your name so confusing? Because of this reason. <laughs> yeah, you did. And only this reason. <laughs> it's pretty much true. I'm a dude. <laughs> you're a dude. She's a dude. Who is she? She's a dude. We're all dudes, hey? I didn't even plan on making a good burger reference with my name, but now I kind of like it. Oh, God. Dude, a burger sounds good right now. I think I just need food. Go <laughs> get food, man. <laughs> Go get food. I will He's find like, the plug. Literally everything oh. sounds good. I will go find the plug now. Wait, is this 